Good morning and welcome to worship. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Many things happening within our worship today. We are giving Bibles to our third graders. And so we are thankful to put the word of God into their hands. We have some first communion with Andre, Alec, and Bennett uh, today. And so we're doing communion a little different right now, but it is great that you are a part and welcoming part of doing that sacrament with us. So if you did not pick up communion, you were supposed to pick up communion on your way in to make sure you have that. Uh, we also recognize we had two baptisms happen yesterday. Um, so we could only fit one name at a time on our banner. So this week it'll be Elsie's name. And next week we'll try to remember to put Decker's name. So we give thanks for our two new members into our congregation through the sacrament of baptism. You can look at your bulletin for all other announcements. The only other one I saw that came up was that there's food boxes being distributed today at Blessed Sacrament at 11 a.m. And so we should be ending worship. And if that is something that your household needs, uh, they are being distributed at the parking lot. Please look at the Facebook to know more about that. Facebook knows more than I do. Anyone else want to shout out any announcements at me? No? All right. Well, today we also celebrate Reformation Sunday. Rooted in the past and growing into the future, the church must always be reformed in order to live out the love of Christ in an ever-changing world. We celebrate the good news of God's grace that Jesus Christ sets us free every day to do this life-transforming work. Reformation Sunday is certainly a festival day where we celebrate and remember our history, but it's also a day to re-examine our faith. Jesus' summary in the law of the law in today's gospel echoes our first reading from Leviticus. We are called not only to love God with our heart, soul, and mind, but also love our neighbors as ourselves. It is out of such love and deep care that Paul shares the gospel with the Thessalonian community. In the confession of sins, we acknowledge that we have not loved God, neighbor, and self. Yet we gather to hear the word of forgiveness and be strengthened by the word and meal to be signs of God's love, mercy, and world. Isn't great that we celebrate giving First Communion and the word of God to members of our community this Sunday. Those are two important testaments to Martin Luther's history and legacy he has left for the Lutheran Church. He did not set out to create a Lutheran church, but to reform the church, to put the word of God into every person's hands so that they may read it for themselves and for all to be able to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion. The message for Reformation Sunday is God's love is for us. It's a love that frees us and defines us as people of God and the members of the whole body of Christ. In God's eyes, we are beautiful, beloved children. Please stand as we join together in confessing our sins and receiving forgiveness. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us in all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We return from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment of one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 
God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, led by the Holy Spirit. Live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God and gracious Lord, we thank, thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in the trials of God. Defend them against all the means of the gospel. And bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and our third graders, if you want to stand, we will present you with Bibles. And they'll be doing that from this, the microphone over there. Bible, so that the story of God and God's people may be with you at home, church, or wherever you choose to carry it. Enjoy reading how God is at work in nature and history. Learn about the life and teachings of Jesus. Be open to how God may continue to speak to you through your readings of the scripture. Let us pray. Blessed be your name, O Lord. Our God, you are the fount and source of every blessing. You have revealed yourself to your human creation in many and diverse ways. Our memory of your revelations is maintained in re and reverence in the scriptures that we open our hands. Look with delight upon us as we renew our commitment to read and remember you in the stories of our salvation. Help us to absorb its wisdom and <coughs> in, in its inspired truth. Encourage us with the help of the Holy Spirit to use these sacred writings for our prayer and inspiration, for the increase of our own faith and devotion, and for the buildings uh, of our kingdom. Through your word, May we be transformed into the very likeness of Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Our third graders that we present to, they are written in your in your bulletin, but they are, our third graders are Jen Flatten, Kendall Hawkard, and Bryn Lawrenson. Okay. In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God, and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in the communion of the saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Sponsors, we present chapters for baptism. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in grace and the love of God, do you desire to have Decker baptized into Christ? We do. We do. As you bring Decker to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with them among God's faithful people, bring them to the word of God and the Holy Supper, teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, the Ten Commandments, place in their hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture them in faith and prayer, so that Decker may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through the word and deed, here for others and a world that God made and work for justice and peace. 
Do you promise to help them grow in the Christian faith and life? Sponsors, do you promise to nurture them in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help them live in the covenant of baptism and in the communion with the church? People of God, do you promise to support Decker and pray for them in their new life in Christ? I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? The Lord Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come to the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world calling forth life you, in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. And through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed by the Holy Spirit. By baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. Do you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Hi, baby. <laughs> Decker? We baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, through the water and the Holy Spirit. We give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Decker with the gift of your Holy Spirit, and the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. The spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Decker, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit, marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Let your light so shine before others so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you in the, into the body of Christ and into the mission that we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. We give thanks and applause in any way. <laughs> Welcome to Elsie's baptism. Thank you for gathering with us. In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity by water and the Holy Spirit. We are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in the communion of the saints, 
We grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Sponsors. Luther and Elsie for baptism. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Elsie baptized into Christ? I do. Mm -hmm. As you bring Elsie to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with them among God's people. People, bring them to the word of God and the Holy Supper. Teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. Place in their hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture them in faith and prayer so that Elsie may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, and care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help her grow in the Christian faith and life? Do. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture them in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help them live in the covenant of baptism and in the communion with the church? I do. People of God, do you promise to support Elsie and pray for her and her new life in Christ? I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the way of sin that draw you from God? Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into death. On the great day he rose again. He descended into heaven. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. And through the sea you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed by the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Elsie, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, through the water and the Holy Spirit. You give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain and help you with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Both now and forever.
you'll make the sign of the cross on her head. I'll say, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. <laughs> Let your love so shine before others that they will see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. You may show your sign of celebration with claps or shouts for joy. <laughs> The first reading is Leviticus 19, 1 through uh, 2, 15 through 18. The holy, uh, holiness code in Leviticus urges people to be only, uh, to be holy because uh, God is holy. Holiness is lived out as God's people exercise justice and love in their dealings with one another. We are to love our neighbors as ourselves. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to all of the congregation of the people of Israel and to say to them, you shall be holy for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall not render any unjust uh, judgment as or you shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great. With justice, you shall judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as as, uh, as a slander among your people, and you shall not profit uh, by the blood of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate in uh, you shall uh, you shall not hate in your heart anyone of your kin. You shall reprove reprove your neighbor, or you will incur guilt yourself. You shall not take vengeance or uh, bear a grudge grudge against any of your people. But you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thank Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, you will not fear, though the earth be a move, and though the mountains shake in the depths of the sea. Though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble with the uh, turnlock, there is a river whose stream makes uh, glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city, it shall not be shaken. God shall help it as at the break of day. The nation rage and the kingdom shake. God speaks and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The uh, God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now, regarding the works of the Lord, uh, what desolations God has uh, brought upon the earth. Behold, the one who makes the war to cease in all the world, who breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still now and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our song. The second, uh, the second reading is one, Phil, uh, Phil, uh, this Philippians uh, 2, verses 1 through 8. Uh, Paul uses um, maternal imagery to depict the caring and the nurturing relationship he shares with the uh, Thessalonian Christians. Uh, when he first came to their city, it was not uh, to benefit himself, but to share the gospel with them, which, has, which was his responsibility as an apostle of Christ. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming uh, to, uh, to you was not in vain. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at uh, Philippi, as you know, we had encouraged in our God to declare that uh, to you the gospel of God in spite of uh, the great opposition. 
for our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even uh, so we speak not to pleasure mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with pretext uh, for greed, nor did we speak praise from mortals, whether from you or from others. Though we might have made the demands as apostles of Christ, but we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her children, uh, so deeply do we hear, uh, so do we, do we care for you that we are determined to share uh, with you not only the gospel of God, but also ourselves, because uh, you have become uh, very dear to us. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thanks to God. Jesus Christ the righteous, 
Your sins are forgiven on account of his name. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 22nd chapter. That wasn't a very enthusiastic. So, the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Indeed, glory to you, O Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the spirit calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading for the Sunday is from the book of Leviticus. Our third graders receive their Bibles, and I don't suggest starting with the book of Leviticus. It is not an easy book to read through. And so are so many of our other Old Testament books. They are so heavy on the law and rules that can be quite tedious to read through them. It can even have you questioning what to even do with some of these Old Testament laws. There are some pretty strange ones, most that we don't even follow because they are so strange. On the other hand, we still keep the Ten Commandments as central rules to abide by. Which laws to live by and which are no longer applicable because they are made for a specific time and place are good questions that you, you should have. You need to think about the original intention of the law to live as a Christian. The laws and guidelines we follow as Christians can be summed up in these two commandments here given by Jesus. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Not with 90%, but with your whole heart, soul, and mind, your whole self. The laws of the Old Testament are how you faithfully live and abide by these two things. The laws give you guidelines on how to love God and love your neighbor in your everyday daily life. When the prophets call out the Israelites, it's because they're either not loving God or not loving their neighbor. When Jesus calls out the religious leaders, whether they be Pharisees, Sadducees, Herodians, it's because they're either not loving God or their neighbor. When Paul is trying to set up the new Christian community as distinct from the Romans, he's saying, put loving God and loving your neighbor above all else. Everything leads back to love. The writer in Leviticus is writing down directions to live out because loving your neighbor doesn't look like giving false judgment being partial to the poor, or deferring to the great. It's not slandering your neighbor or taking profit off of them. It's a matter of your heart to not have hate, vengeance, or bear a grudge. Looking at the Old Testament laws, you can see the motivation of the prophets as God's mouthpieces were to be strong critics of what the law should look like in order to love your neighbor. It's always been God's expectation, not something new that came with Jesus, to have faith based on love, not law. If you see the path towards living out a christ life is based on love, you won't be trapped by laws or rules, rather free. 
The freedom in Christ relies on love being at the center of our faith and actions. It's not dependent on our love, which can fail, but on God's love. That is what is important to Martin Luther, the freedom of the Christian. When Martin Luther was reforming the church, his intention was to address the places in theology where the church held Christians captive to sin with rules, regulations, and obligations. Martin Luther developed the concept that as fully forgiven children of God, Christians are no longer compelled to keep God's law to obtain salvation. However, they freely and willingly serve God and their neighbor. And that's what our gospel from Matthew is. Verses 37 through 40, Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and prophets. So freely serve God and your neighbor as forgiven children of God, living out love. Just as Martin Luther reformed the church 500 years ago, we too must continue to reform in order to live out love of Christ. Reform by challenging laws and obligations we have placed in front of faith, so that we as Christians unite more fully in worship and mission. All our actions need to be rooted in love, and love may come in different forms, but it's based on God's unending and holy love for us. As the election looms closer, as we get more and more frustrated by limits and disappointments that are a result from COVID, we remember that all we say and do is based on loving God and our neighbor. Hate is a sin that can easily fill our heart. It fills us with selfishness and lacks compassion. Hate will try to bind us to laws and judgments of this world. However, if we have been made free in Christ, we are people of a loving and forgiving God. This love of God is for you and your neighbor. This week, live out your Christian faith by loving God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Examine your life of faith. Challenge the rules that we may have placed on each other. Critically think about laws in society to understand if they really love God with their whole heart, and if those laws really love your neighbor. We remember at the close of our worship service that how we are blessed and then dismissed to go in peace. And it's the second part of that phrase, remember the poor. That is what love is, to go in peace, remembering the poor, or whatever else we say as our dismissal, to go and do out of love. Thanks be to God. We will hear our hymn of the day, which is Mighty Fortress, as our traditional Lutheran anthem. And if you know the words, you can go ahead and sing them along in your head, or just hold the words in your hearts as parts of our faith that we declare. Thank you. 
us join together in declaring our faith. Please stand and be joined together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Holy God, you speak to your church, give courage and the bond of love to all who gather in your name, that this love turn toward our neighbor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your love, you guide us with justice, inspire leaders for truthful conversations and wise policies, that the decisions are made for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy, in your love, you tenderly care for your children and nurse them to health, bring relief to all who are in need of healing, hope, or restoration this day, especially those within our community, for Jerry, Brent, Lisa, Linda, Sheila, George, Deb, Mark, Kathy, David, Lily Beth, Norman, and Danny. And we pray for the families who have lost loved ones, for the family of Wayne Hansen, Richard Foldesey, and of Dell Christensen. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In your word, you have taught us to love and be loved. Continue to guide us as we learn to share the good news with others. Today, we especially give thanks to those receiving their Bibles and those receiving First Communion. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In your love, we remember those who were dear to us and now rest in you. We give thanks for Martin Luther and all who seek to reform and renew your church. Give courage to live out your gospel, revealing your love until our days on earth have ended. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. By your grace, you have freed us from sin through the waters of baptism. Pour out your grace upon Elsie Lynn Nelson and Decker James Hansen as they are received into the body of Christ. Guide the parents and sponsors to teach and bless the children. Lord, in your mercy. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all from whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. You may share the peace of God with each other. Just keep your hands to yourself as you wave, as you shout hello, just greet your neighbors around you. And we extend that greeting to those of you who continue to worship with us online. You too, we extend this peace. At this time in our worship, we take time for our offering. We receive our offering in the back of our worship space as you come and go, or those of you who continue to worship with us online through the mail or we're using the drop box by the office door. So we give praise and thanks with this prayer. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things, you have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us with this food and drink, and send us forth to set tables in the midst of suffering world. Through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
and then also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise.
with you who those of you who continue to worship with us online if you would like to receive communion please just contact me and we can schedule a time for you to pick communion up or for it to be delivered if you have someone else in your household that is not able to attend worship and communion and receive communion in person please just let me know and you are able to take communion with you as it's blessed to go back and share that communion with someone in your household. We pray this after receiving communion. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you once again fed us with this food beyond compare. Body and blood of Christ, lead us from this place nourished and forgiven into your beloved vineyard to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst, guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ, and led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Receive this blessing. Mothering God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Uh, our <laughs> sending hymn is a familiar hymn to many of you, and I know there is a deep desire to sing along, but you have we're not to the point of singing in our congregation yet, so you are welcome to sing the words in your head, very softly hum the words if you're wearing your mask correctly. Singing just projects more uh, air particles through your mask, so if you sit, hum softly, you can uh, allow that, because I know everyone wants to proclaim their faith through these words. But we will delightfully listen to our singer who leads us in this song. Mm -hmm. 